Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about something mysterious that seems to be happening right at the center of our galaxy where the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star is located. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So imagine you're looking at Sagittarius A star and you're trying to investigate it and then suddenly, for some unknown reason, the brightness of the Sagittarius A star goes up by about 75 times. In other words, it becomes ridiculously bright. So bright as a matter of fact that it's about 32 times as luminous or as bright as our sun. But this doesn't last and then suddenly it goes down again after only a few hours. So this is what the scientists Behind this paper discovered only a few days ago from when I'm making this video. They were looking at our black hole and suddenly, for no apparent reason, it became really bright very, very quickly. Beating all previous records, being the brightest it's ever been since we started observing it roughly around 20 years ago. So we can kind of imagine what's maybe happening here, but we don't really know why. And the easiest explanation here is of course that something in the central region of the galaxy came too close to Sagittarius A star and got absorbed by it, generating all of this energy um, through the increase in the luminosity in the accretion disk. But as you may know, we are actively looking at this region pretty uh, much every day and we always observe at what's happening in the central region. And nothing seems to have happened in the last year or so that would generate such a tremendous amount of energy. However, over a year ago, the so-called S2 star did come relatively close to the supermassive black hole, as you can see right here, and it does so every 16 years. At the same time, there were at least two so-called clouds that also approached the black hole relatively close, and as you can see, um, may have caused this emission that we now observe. However, our simulations suggest that this is probably what the cloud looks like right now, and if the matter did fall into the black hole, it did so without really alerting us to this happening. And if this matter came from the S2 star that you see right here that orbits the black hole every 16 years, well, in this case it seems to have taken its sweet time to get into the black hole. Well, let's try to see if it's even possible. At its closest approach to the black hole, uh, which is right there in the distance, the matter from S2 star was roughly around 100 astronomical units away, 100 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. So I decided to basically take a random star here and place it at 100 AU, 100 astronomical units, away from the Sagittarius A star that's right there. And let's see if it takes roughly around one year to reach this black hole. So right now it's, it says three days. We're going to basically run the simulation and if it takes roughly around one year, then I guess maybe the biggest culprit was the matter from um, the star itself. And here, um, because of the gravitational acceleration from uh, the black hole, the star starts moving pretty fast, pretty quick. And all of this matter is actually already moving at like 68,000 kilometers per second. Now, only a day later, it's basically already on the um, edges of the black hole. Now, this might be a very extreme version of the simulation, but it does show you, first of all, how powerful the black hole is. But it also shows you that um, it's kind of something that should have happened much earlier. This matter should have fallen into the black hole a lot quicker than over a year that would have taken this object to fall into um, the black hole. And so it's possible that the matter that fell into the black hole came from somewhere else, not from the S2 star and also not from the uh, G1 and G2 clouds that came relatively close to the black hole and essentially fell apart as you see right here. But it just so happens that literally a day after the release of initial paper, another team, completely separate team, using a completely different telescope, was able to observe something else coming from exactly the same region. And they saw not just the illumination but also very powerful X-ray flares that were most likely caused by something once again falling into the black hole. These flares were also ridiculously bright and very powerful and suggested that something major is happening around Sagittarius A star 
and we don't really know what. Uh, there was even a suggestion that maybe we just don't really understand how the accretion disks work. Maybe this is something that's pretty common, but we just didn't really calculate it precisely. So nevertheless, though, it doesn't change the fact that our black hole is strangely becoming more bright and more active. Something very active, very, very powerful and very energetic is happening here. And we are not entirely sure what's causing it. Now, it's possible that it's an object that fell into the black hole that we just didn't see before. Maybe even something smaller, like a tiny moon or a very large asteroid that got disintegrated and fell into the black hole. But um, because it's been happening for a few months now, we think that it's just something that we need to study in a little bit more detail. Now, because of the actual flares and the power involved, and due to the distances involved here, which is roughly around 23,000 light years away from us, we really shouldn't be concerned about this. This black hole is still really, really far away from us, so we have nothing to worry about. But if this is something that is only at the beginning of something much larger, in that case, we definitely need to study it and see if it causes us any danger. Because obviously the last thing we want is for something as powerful as an astrophysical jet to suddenly point at our planet. Now, it's probably not going to happen, but um, nevertheless, this is why we study these things, because we want to understand them and be able to predict when something dangerous does happen. And what's really interesting is that back um, in 2018, when the scientists were observing the passage of S2 star, as you see right here, we actually expected some kind of a basically a firework show. We expected flares and explosions and potentially a lot of different energy produced that we would be observing, but ironically, nothing happened back then. So maybe just maybe this is just a delayed reaction to this. Maybe this is something that is supposed to happen, but we just didn't know that it's going to take a while for all of this to start happening. At the same time, something similar was expected from the G1 and G2 clouds, and also not much happened back then either. And so if this simulation is correct, as you see here, in the next few years we should be observing a lot of these flares because G2 cloud may have released a lot of materials that that will actually fall into the black hole and create this energy that we'll be able to observe from planet Earth and study in more detail. But for now, as of today, we don't really know what's happening, we just know that it happened. We also know that we shouldn't really worry yet, but it's something that we need to understand so we don't have to worry in the future. And at the same time, it gives us a much better reason to try to zoom in here once again, take a really, really detailed picture of what's happening here, and to, of course, try to understand not only how black holes work, but also how the accretion disk influences everything around it and what it really does around the black hole. The best simulations right now are still just simulations. We're still not entirely sure if this is what the accretion disk even looks like. So once we understand all of this, we'll be able to explain why the black hole suddenly increased the luminosity and if these flares are going to happen again, and of course, when they happen in the future. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to show in this video, and that's all I wanted to explain. Once we discover what's really going on, I'm going to make sure to update this with another video in the future. So do subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe click the notification button to be notified about that upcoming video. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.